Hello everybody and welcome to another video here at TD Channel. My name is Rudy Cortez and today we're going to be going uh, over uh, control flow in our introduction to programming series. So what is control flow? As we covered earlier on our video, on the previous video that uh, we saw, um, we learned that programming is the control execution of operations. Uh, so basically, you as a programmer, you're going to tell the computer to perform certain operations and you need to control in which way these operations are performed. So why do we want control flow? Uh, let's go back and look at our refrigerator analogy. Uh, if you see back then that uh, we had this little bit of pseudocode running and uh, if we look closely at this code, you'll see that we have several statements here that are actually control flow. So even though we have not covered it, we've already seen a little bit of it. Um, so uh, here, the top one uh, right here is an iterator. And uh, it's something that will allow you to repeat code. And we will have another video that will go over iteration. And down here, you have uh, more of the typical uh, control flow statements that allow you to decide what piece of code to run at which time. So to be able to perform control flow, you're going to need to have some relational operators. Uh, and these operators, they allow you to compare values so that you can make decisions based on the outcome of these values. So for example, uh, if you put two equals together, you're compelling, comparing for equality. If you put uh, an exclamation point next to an equal, you're testing for not equality. And then after that, you have a less than, a greater than, uh, greater than or equal or less than or equal and these are pretty much the basic building blocks of uh, the different tests that you're going to do to be able to control the flow of your of your uh, program so let's look at an example for example uh, this here is a control flow that has one single outcome and one single test um, on most computer program co programming languages this is going to be called the if statement so for example, here we have several variables. Uh, one is called age, which is equal to 24. Another one is called old age, which is equal to 65. And here you can see our first statement. If age is greater than old age, then we're going to print out you are a senior. So right now, basically, you're comparing the value of age against the value of old age and you're going to print your senior. In this case, age is 24 and old age is 65, so you are not going to get this print, but this is a little bit of an example of how the if statement will work. If we look at another example, uh, once again, here we have uh, one out outcome per test, and basically what we're doing here is we're just stringing together two if statements, um, one next to the next. Uh, so for example, once again, we've added a new variable here called young age and we're giving it a value of 18. Um, our same previous test as before, if age is greater than old age, print you are a senior. But if age is less than young age, print you are a kid or you know, you're young. Um, there is another way in which you can uh, write the previous example that we just went over and instead of testing for things twice, if you know that there's only two probable outcomes of your tests, you can use the if else statement. So for instance, here is a similar example, age equals 24, old age equals 65. If age is greater than old age, then print your senior, else print your kid. So in this particular example, um, you have one single test that can give you two different outcomes. Sometimes you might be coding something and you have uh, you might need to support many different outcomes. So for example, uh, uh, on this little piece of code right here, uh, and for this instance, you will usually use the if, else, if, else statement. So for example, uh, here we have the first test is if age is greater than old age, print your senior. Else if, that means uh, there might be another option and we're going to test against it. So else if age is less than young age, print you're a kid. And then else, basically for this one, we're not going to run a test because we already have the two conditions that we need. Are you older or are you younger? And since there is a chance that you are not older, you're not younger, you're somewhere in the middle, 
we need an extra statement which is called the else statement which will print in this instance you're an adult. So let's look at logical operators. Uh, these are operators that might that will allow you to uh, concatenate or put together different uh, evaluations, different rules to see if you can proceed to the next part of the code block. So for instance, um, uh, sometimes your code can be a lot smaller if you string conditions together. Uh, let's look at this example. Here we're going to use multiple conditions uh, and in this particular case we only care to report an adult condition. So we're going to do this. If user age is less than senior age and then you see this double ampersand symbol which means and. So if user age is less than senior age and user age is greater than minor age then we're gonna print you're an adult because basically our age or user age is gonna be somewhere between senior age and minor age because it's gonna satisfy these two conditions. It has to be less than senior and it has to be greater than minor. Sometimes you might need to test uh, different things. So for example, in this particular case, we're going to uh, test to make sure that the user is not an adult. And for this, we're going to use an OR expression. So if you look at the code here, you're going to see if user age is greater, greater than senior age, or if user age is less than minor age, then print you're not an adult. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to test against this. So if the user age is greater than senior age, um, if this gives you a positive, it will immediately go into print you're an adult. However, if this fails and it gives you a false, then it's going to go to the next statement because it's seeing this OR symbol here, these two bars here, that, that means OR. So first it's going to test for this, and if this doesn't give you true, it's going to move to the next one and it's going to test for this. Um, once this one returns true, it will print. So this is a little bit different from a previous example where basically you had an AND and basically um, the way this works is that the program will evaluate both statements regardless. So it's going to evaluate this one and if this one returns false, it's just not even going to bother with the rest because both of these have to be true. So it's first going to test this part right here and if that is true, then it's going to continue and test the other one. And both of these statements, this one right here and this one right here, need to be true for the program to continue to the next block. So as a summary, when you're using double ampersand, which is AND, the next statement evaluated only if the previous is true. And all statements must be true to go into the code block. When you're using an OR, uh, basically what you're doing is the next statements will be evaluated only if the preview once is false and as soon as one statement is true we will go into the code block. Let's look at a little bit of a more advanced example. Let's say you're writing uh, a shader. In this case, uh, this is actually from real uh, world. Um, it's a shader for RenderMan. And in RenderMan, when you're rendering with a RenderMan based render, a lot of times you have some pre passes such as uh, an irradiance bake or a subsurface bake or even a shadow pass. So a lot of times what you will do is you will write shaders that are smart enough to know what shader context they're in. So uh, let's see here, for example, uh, this would be a diffuse shading component. And here we are saying that render context is equal to final. So somewhere inside the code of the shader, you can have a, a rule like this. If render context equals shadow, we're going to return black. Why is this? Because for most shadow passes, on the average, um, you don't need to run the entire shader. The shader is just going to test for the depth of the surface. So if you return a black, you can save yourself a lot of execution time. So if the render context is shadow, we're going to return black. But if the render context is either final, or irradiance bake or subsurface bake we're going to return the diffuse color. So here you can see we're concatenating three different rules. This is one, this is rule two, and down here is rule three and they're all concatenated with the OR example. So if any one of these values return true we're going to go in here and return the diffuse color. So let's look at another, another example. This might be um, 
the, done the other way around. Uh, for example, you have a reflection shading component. A lot of times, the reflection, because it's a view-dependent calculation, you're not going to be able to pre-bake it. So, uh, once again, in our example, if render context is shadow, once again, reflections are not going to contribute to shadows, or render context is irradiance bake, or render context is subsurface scattering bake, we're going to return black. Else, if we're in the render context final, we're going to return reflection color. So these are just a couple of examples of how you can concatenate rules together to make uh, more complex decisions on how to run your program. And uh, one final uh, logical operator we're going to cover is the, uh, the not symbol, which allows you to revert the value. So for example, in this particular example, uh, you can see uh, we have a test here if age is greater than old age. So in this, uh, if the age is greater than old age, um, you're going to usually print you are a senior. But because we put this little uh, exclamation point uh, right outside the test, basically we're telling it whatever this returns, invert it or make it a not. So um, in this particular case, age is 24, old age is 64. I'm sorry, it's 65. So here you're going to see age is greater than old age. So 24 is greater than 65. That's going to be false. So this is going to turn that false into a true because it's going to be not. It's going to be the invert of that. Therefore, we're going to go in here and print you are not a senior. So that pretty much covers the basis of uh, control flow. There's uh, another several statements that are present in other languages that we're not going to cover because we're just concentrating on the concepts right now. And as we move forward into uh, functional programming or applied programming, you're going to see how all of these uh, different control flow structures can be used to achieve the effects or the behavior that you want from your program. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you in the next video.